we're back at it again, and we're training some of them thighs, them thunderous thighs, guys. Um, welcome to the channel. Welcome to a brand new implementation, and it's time for some squats, bruh. Time for some squats. Again, um, this session was centered more on, how would I put this? More of an all-out intensity set. You guys know I love doing a lot of volume, especially for legs. I will typically do probably six to eight different exercises for legs. Um, on the norm, I will warm up with leg extensions, go into my squats, um, transition into front squats at times, then go to hack squats, then go to the leg press, and then go to two to three hamstring movements. And that does not even include calves. So talk about a long day. And many of you guys have asked me in the past how long my workouts will typically last. And of recent, my workouts last anywhere between 100, 100 geez, where am I going? An hour and a half to three hours. And normally those three hour workouts are due to the fact that I'm doing cardio now. And so I will implement like 15 to 20 minutes at the end. Um, but also it is attributed to the fact that I've been trying my damnedest. I've been trying my absolute hardest to hit calves every single day because I have that ultimate belief in a cheeky manner that if you're training your calves every day, yes, they have time to recover. Yes, they have time to recuperate. For the first few weeks, they may be extremely sore each day. And if you have like a sore muscle group and you're going into a workout, in my opinion, you can either try to work through it or if it's too much and you feel like it's you're going to risk injury or something along those lines, then of course, you feed into your body and you don't do those types of, types of things. So right here is my quote unquote all out set. Um, one thing to keep in mind is the fact that I was trying to keep constant tension and this is something I don't normally do, but I'm pausing at the top for a brief moment. And I am flexing my ass cheeks. I am flexing my quads, hamstrings, everything possible, even my core. Um, I was considerate of bringing in my abdominal region and my obliques to flex everything possible during this type of an exercise. I tried to get a few breaths in in between each rep and I tried to really breathe and flex. Like, what do you call it? Engaging your core. That's what I was, the word I was looking for. Um, but I was trying to engage, engage my core on each rep to really feel strong and powerful. And I, I think I only got nine reps, which is decent enough because I've not been training for strength um, like in the past month, month and a half. It's just not like a huge priority to me right now. I have been getting progressively stronger. And 315 for nine for my body, my structure and everything, you guys. I'm not some freaking power lifter. That's good for me. I'm proud to say that I can squat 315 for anywhere from 9 to 14 reps, depending on what type of a day it is. And this is my first leg day in the gym in, I don't know, a, cu a couple of days. I mean, I had a workout at my house, and I think the last time before that was with my friend Cody. So it's been a couple of days. And right here, I decided to throw on the knee wraps because doing cardio, going from the stair climber, and I've been going on to the treadmill and doing some high-intensity interval training where I actually perform some sprints. I don't have the shoes on right now, but I've been doing those sprints in my, like, combat boots. And on one of the days that I was doing it, I was sprinting pretty damn fast. I forget which level I had the treadmill at. But I got home, and I was walking around, walking upstairs, and my knee was bothering the shit out of me. And so I figured I'm going to have to get my free runners and bring those to the gym on days that I feel like sprinting. I've yet to go pick those up for my parents' house, but I think that would be a very good idea. So that's just one reason I'm using the knee wraps. I think it's important that your knees fall in line when you're with your toes and everything. Otherwise, you're going to have some real bad issues. So this is 10 plates aside on the leg press. You saw I had to grab my leg. It started cramping to all hell. And I had this little old man come up to me in the gym. And he's come up to me in the past training legs when I was hack squatting. I had like five plates on. 
And he came up. He's like, you training for the Olympics? And I laughed. I kind of laughed hard. I was like, no, I wish I was. But he came back up to me today. And I had that 10 plates on. He must have thought I was a douchebag. But he was like, you know, I could show you how it's done. And I was like, yeah, you could jump in with me. And he laughed so hard. He was like, oh, I knew you were going to say that and everything. He's like, keep up that good work. That's some impressive weight. I was like, yeah, but in normal terms, I'm cheating with these knee wraps. He's like, no, that's some very good form for those types of poundages, which was pretty cool. A little bit of some motivation there. But that was really it for quads. Um, the leg extensions in the beginnings of these workouts are never recorded because Number one, I first get into the gym, I just walk in there, and I don't really feel like setting up my tripod right away uh, for, just for some leg extensions. So I always usually do like three to six sets of leg extensions to flush some blood into the joints. I feel that's important. I do a couple of heavy um, sets and lower reps just to get used to heavier weight. And I do a lot of stretching too before going into squats just to make sure I'm flexible and that everything's going to basically not shut down on me. But hamstring work right here, these stiff-legged butthole leaking freaking deadlifts. Someone told me I should patent that. I don't know. You guys are freaking nuts. But that's the end of it. Thank you guys for watching. I love you all so much. Peace out. Bye.